Welcome back, it is Friday and that means FNA Friday for new animators and today I'm gonna to do a part two to a previous one that was how to add character to your animation. Technically, it should be another part in the animation blocking series, but something came up that was really cool and I don't wanna wait until the very end of all the animation blocking parts because it's gonna be a long time in the future because there's a lot to talk about for animation blocking. So every now and then you will see new FNAs or a part two or three or whatever to previous FNAs peppered throughout in between. And today is gonna be part two of how to add character to your animation with a real world example of one of my students from the academy. We are taking a look at a clip from Zoe Chen and I'm gonna show you the first version that she showed in class then kind of my thoughts on this a quick critique kind of kind of a recap to everything then I'll show you how she improved on top of that which will serve as an example of how you would add character and do specific things to kind of go beyond your initial blocking just to add more complexity and interest I will also show you her latest and greatest there's still work to do but it's a lot better with all the notes incorporated but I will also add the critique of the second version at the very end of this clip just in case you're interested in it so let's get straight into that so let me play you the clip here here is the first version that she did. It is based on a gear change assignment. And you can see that is the gear change. So the kid is playing, something happens and he fails and gets mad. And I think I have done the same when I was little. So my initial impression was, and this is something that I'm telling all of my students, and this came up actually this Thursday a lot, is that when you have a shot like this, you can scrub through and you can see how the character kind of fits in this box. There's no real movement that is pretty locked. There is no weight shift, the contrast, just the overall body pose is always the same. Even though that is good, there is a change in this pose from being hunched over. I like that. You know, the excitement of what's going on with the game makes him get closer to the TV and straighten up. Then you have the disappointment and the look away, breaking contact from the TV. All that is cool, but my main impressions were kind of stuck in that box. So my comments would be so that you can add some more complexities to it um, in terms of progression. So what if the kid would sit here and then goes forward because of interest? So because of the, the tension, all the stuff he wants to do, he gets off of it. So you go from a sitting to potentially a standing or you could go down onto his knees. What do you want to do? But you change from a sitting to a standing pose. Just from a mechanics point of view, that's interesting to do. And it's something you know you have to learn, um, but it's also contrasting wise, more interesting. And then when he is done, that instead of staying put like this, there could be something, potential exit or turning around or falling on the ground, whatever it is, but you could do something that's potentially a bit more interesting. So there was more to it, but that as a whole, that was the gist of the first critique, mainly that the character is always stuck in that same position, which is a common thing that students do. And it's something that I encourage students to break free from because you're not so, you still don't have your character stuck in that one position. A, it just makes it look like you got, you know, you're just stuck in that, your IK legs, you don't want to move them, you're kind of concerned or afraid or just hesitant of doing weight shifts, but it just kind of locks that character too much into that place. And visually, there's just not enough contrast. If someone always sits or always stands, you can do more to use the scene but give the scene also more interest and visual interest uh, through contrast and posing and movement and timing and so on. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna load her revision. So this was the other version. We have a bit more progression there and then this reaction and the stomp out. And that is the shot that I will add at the very end, the critique to that. And I was absolutely amazed. I thought it was fantastic. The main thing was the camera move, just take that out. It's a bit, not that it's super distracting, but I don't think it's needed. You can easily stay here. But here are the things that I really, really like is that the character starts in a seated position and it's cute because the feet are off the ground. It's a typical kid thing. It's very concentrated. And as he gets more concentrated, more interested and excited, he gets off the couch. It's a cute way of getting off. I was kind of talking about offsetting legs, but again, that's all at the end of this FNA. But he gets off the couch. And this is the moment that I absolutely love. So after all of this, here's the reaction. Love, love, love. This is such a good moment. This is her acting it out. Now, she was not super comfortable showing the reference. I totally understand. It's kind of in a casual environment, but she did film reference and that is her acting it out. And it's such a good kid tantrum. To me, it goes from very concentrated, doing his thing, and then having that, ah, 
Ah, such a kid thing and this really angry throw. And then also the stomp and then exit. So in terms of animation, just complexity, they're sitting, jumping off to standing, right? Into this. And then you have your big acting moment where you can show character. And even after that, there's a 90 degree change and a walk getting out. So that's the second version. So much better, absolutely love it. So here are the shots side by side and you can see the differences. Static on the left and much more engagement on the right. You can see how that change versus staying here. I'm gonna repeat myself, but still, you got that excitement, him standing here. Then you got the tantrum, which is so much better. He gets mad and throws, he gets mad and throws it here, and then the exit there. So much better. Now here's the latest version. So after this one, that was so much better and such a huge improvement. Of course, I have more notes, but I always kind of have notes. So here's the version after the latest rounds of notes. There's a bit more leaning forward towards the TV, a bit of a bigger take. You got the reaction here, different controller animation and the exit. And here as a last example, you can see both side by side. You can see the changes in terms of the timing, the movements, body mechanics. You can see how there's more interest towards the TV with that lean forward versus here being static. Still got the, you know, the more disappointment look, but it's the same idea, just a bit more refined. You got the tantrum, that's still awesome. You got control animation, that's a bit more work in terms of physics. You got the stomp, that's a bit more with a lean. Here's a bit off balance there. And with the exit still, and kind of a change of the timing of stomp, and then a faster exit. This still has notes, but as a whole, it's massively better. So again, here is the latest version. And at the end of the semester, every student still has time to refine whatever they did, but that is the current form. And finally, here is the very first version and the latest version side by side. You can see the increase in complexity. It's more interesting in terms of shape changes, complexity in body mechanics, using the space, acting choices. It's just overall such a stronger piece. It's absolutely fantastic. Very proud of her. There was so much work in there. Really, really cool. Awesome move there. That's it. So that was it, that's the example. I'm gonna post a critique to that second version again at the end of this FNA, just in case you're curious. And actually I have other examples because in the last couple of weeks at Animation Mentor and the Academy, there were great examples of taking a lip sync to the next level. And there's another example of another Academy student also with a fantastic change of the shot, incorporating notes, taking it further. And it's something I wanna show every now and then so you can see actually real world examples, what students do, how they incorporate the notes, how do they implement the lecture notes. And to me, improve their shots in terms of body mechanics, in terms of complexity, in terms of acting, and they, they push themselves and they learn a lot more. Zoe Chen did a fantastic job. So if you see her in the halls of the Academy, tell her she did a great job. I will tell her again next week. Probably next week, I'm gonna continue with the animation blocking. And even though it's important and I think it's important to watch and to learn, I still wanna bring in some contrast in my own lecture so you're not stuck with one long topic on this channel. So that's it. As always, if you like this, I would love a like and a subscribe and hitting that bell button and all that jazz. But if you like this shot and you see your fellow students, Zoe in the halls of the Academy, you should tell her that she did an awesome job because she did. If you have anything nice to say, post a comment, I will let her know. Or if she watches this, she can see the comments for herself. And that's it from me. I will see you next week. Okay, <clears throat> let's take a look at this. Bum, bum, ba, da, ba, ba. Oh no. No. <laughs> oh my god, I love this. This this is fantastic. I love it. The only thing is just keep your I like how big in frame he is. How about this? Leave the camera like that. Uh and then scale down your You don't really have to. I mean you can just leave the TV like this. I kinda like seeing this shape. So I would have said, um, scale the TV down so that we can see the, you know, the table, the, the legs. I don't think you need to. Maybe some cables so we understand it's a TV. No, actually, I think it's fine. I mean, it's still, forget everything I said up until now. <laughs> don't move the camera because we want to see this framing. Um, and I absolutely love this. This is so great. His concentration, I love how the feet are dangling, the legs. I like that he uses that little swing to get forward because of the energy and the action. 
you could potentially... He's doing this, right? And then as he plays, I would still have him lean forward. So he's a bit more engaged. And then when this happens, he can go back up where he's a bit more like... <gasps> like that moment where he feels like the shock sets in. Then you can be a bit more forward, right? So it's not so straight and a bit too default. So it's a bit more lean forward. But as he plays this, I would definitely have him legs a bit more bent and more engaged forward. So again, you have a bit more room uh, for body contrast and visual contrast. Then this is just too, um, what's the word? Linear and just even in timing, just how this floats down even though there's a bit of a change there you want to make this a bit more a bit more interesting and, and involve the body a bit more this was a bit too simple there this is fantastic i'm assuming you used reference i want to see that reference out if you did this i love the engagement of the shoulders the drag of this arm all the changes in the body his face this is so good and it's such a kid thing. This is so fantastic. I love this. I couldn't be more in love with this. Then he throws that away. Watch out, it kind of pops out. So I would do the throw where he lands here. Whoa, what's going on here? My computer's freezing. Lands here with maybe one or two bounces. Right now it just has that pop out. So that's a bit weird. But I like that he throws it out because he's that angry. Watch out, this is a bit too push in terms of the breakup. You know, like got your neck out and then the head suddenly coming up there. So you can potentially low, uh, bring up that lower neck thing here and then have that head still be, be there. Um, there's some more mechanics thing I can get to later, but as a whole, these are the big notes. Uh, that controller thing. And I love how he stomps out, but he feels a bit like he's leaning backwards. It just slips off balance. Like here, it feels off balance. So either you bring up the hip forward so that you have a bigger curve with arms back, which you can totally do, or take the whole root and just rotate him forward. Same animation, everything is the same, but he's leaning a bit more forward so that he doesn't feel so off balance or it's just so straight. Because again, you got that moment of straight and then suddenly kind of a broken neck and the head going back. So this feels a bit broken there. Uh, and yeah, there's no camera move. I don't need you need you don't need that camera move. It's a bit too over dramatic, and I would just concentrate on the kid. So for your next pass, you know offsets, so they're not everything's not so twinned. Same thing with the elbows, different poses, so that the timing and posing is not so twinned. On his jump forward when he lands, I like your little steps forward. Um, you can potentially just to give it a bit more polish and contrast. As he's here, he's very default and parallel and twinned. So imagine he goes forward and as he takes that step, that's a bit of a bigger step, but ideally, I would probably take, again, I might be unraveling too much. Again, you could, it's up to you, but what I would do to push this, because this animation is so good, I think you are absolutely capable of doing this. As he goes forward, this step forward here is just further forward. And then he just takes that step to here. So imagine that this foot is further here and then you got this and then you got that. But so that the whole body is a bit more rotated. His his right side is a bit more towards the, um, the TV. Now, I know he's just playing towards the TV and you don't want to go too far. But I'm looking for something where it's not so parallel and clean and twinned. So there's a slight change in the body and it's a bit more like one side is engaged. Plus, you know, maybe maybe he pushes more buttons on here. So more of the muscles are engaged here and that way. Because of that, this side of the body is more towards the TV. But also because once you do this, oh, he does that. He could potentially pull that foot back a bit. Um, you know, so then you have a bit of a, a change between here and here. So it's not just in his arms. And I was just hesitating. I was thinking, maybe, maybe not. Maybe if that leg is here, that foot, and this foot is further back, 
then you rotate the root over so that you kind of leave the legs but the body is a bit more to um, angled towards the camera it's as if he wants to move his body away from the screen because he's disengaging and he's just upset then when you get into this you can have again a bit of a rotation from legs here body towards us to rotate the root over into this pose and take a step back into this and maybe that step is a step that goes into like a first small stomp and then you do this and that and that and that and the reason why i'm saying all this is because he's very parallel to the screen and it's very twinned very clean i like that little step there a lot though but then it gets very then it's kind of like one pose where it's just arm movement and then into this and i think you can push that a bit more with a bit more complexity so that you know always imagine a character's left handed right hand and so his right side is a bit more towards uh the screen and then when he gets like i said when he goes oh, into this instead of just having arms go down it would be that with his legs offset here that he would change his body and rotate his body so he's a bit more towards camera and then he can go and change it again with a little step back into this pose i hope this makes sense uh if not um you know we can talk about it in class and i can show you but that's what i would do and it's small things it's really just small adjustments to give this a bit more complexity so it's not just step step and it's just clean 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 but once you get into this it's awesome and i love it and i love his little extra stomp and his little hands there that's great uh i would just look at once we get into this right once you get into this that's all cool i like your nice big line of action there but once you do this throw this feels very very locked so as you do this you would have a bit of a foot roll and rotation over you can engage the shoulder more that it's this way a bit more of a you know when you throw this i look at this frame especially it feels like it's throwing towards the camera more towards us versus this way which again since i mentioned that you should have the, the controller bounce off and see at least one bounce off this will actually help you so imagine the arm is actually more away from us so that the shoulder is not here but actually here the rotation of the chest will be more out this way following this arm throw so this is a bit it's a bit more work also look at how much your body moves forward and then here suddenly it stops and over those frames this goes forward this is the broken neck part but if you actually follow through with this arm movement that root you know instead of here the center it will be already here with the body moved forward arm down shoulder forward so just this section needs more work in terms of mechanics like he suddenly gets stuck in space and you can see how this area is completely locked in visual space in 2d space with the legs and everything moving so and then you got that counter where suddenly this section is pinned visually and everything pivots off of here you see your ik arm is kind of locked in here so at this point this he might be already here visually but again i love this i love your extra stomp just watch out for moments like this where the, the wrist feels really broken and you can see it again here i thought at the end yeah here it's suddenly broken so watch out for those moments that feel a bit off Watch out that your foot doesn't intersect with the ground. There's some weird where I feel like there needs to be a foot roll. So this could be a bit cleaner. And this feels like you're easing into the stomp to make this a bit harsher. Like I said, maybe lean forward for more stompy forward drive momentum and proper balance. And I think you could potentially you can do stomp this keep this timing but then bump 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 these steps a bit faster because right now you have this ah stomp and then it's kind of like eh, i guess i'm going to stomp out in a bit more relaxed fashion and relax in terms of timing i feel you can do ah holds like ah maybe here have a slight hold of two frames so just add two more frames into this stomp and then Ba, 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 ba. He, he just steps out this fast so it's a bit a bit more contrast in timing of 
Let's throw up. Two more frames here. I know it's minimal, but a bit more of a hold. Stomp and then... And then gets out because he's really angry. And then the speed will help with the lean forward and so on and so on. Alrighty, I think that is it. But it's so much better. It's so much better than what you had last week. It's a huge improvement. And I love the acting choices. It's so kid-like. And also the complexities of having character come up, do his thing, and then do a 90 degree change. In terms of complexities and body mechanics, that's a great change and a full exit off screen. Just to see the aftermath of, well, the, the control will be off, but maybe it bounces off and comes back. I don't know. I don't know what you want to do here, but yeah, it just feels weird how it just kind of exits here. So maybe, yeah, again, like I said, bounce off, boom, and it can always kind of come back if you want, because I kind of like this. That's the emptiness, the, 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 the control is on the ground and be awesome. It would be kind of broken. Some cables, cables are out and it's kind of some broken red light blinking to show this is, you know, this is the broken thing and that's the aftermath. But again, this is probably way too much. I'm just exaggerating here, but, um, that's it. All right. That's it for me, but it's super cool. And, uh, it would be awesome. You're actually the third person now and, and, uh, people who emailed me for this class, this is so cool. And I would love if you could send me your first version that you showed. And if I could post both of them online, obviously you can hundred percent say no. Um, but I would love to show this as an example of this is your first version or you had your first version and this is your new version and how you took the notes and how you made it so much better. I think this would be really great for people to see as a fantastic example of this is how you incorporate notes and this is how you push your shop forward. Again, you're absolutely fine by saying no, that's totally fine. But I just wanted to say again, this is so good on so many levels. Obviously, you know, all the feedback for the mechanics, but it's such a huge improvement and you can be a million times proud of your progress. This is really, really cool. I can't stress this enough. All right, thank you.